Greetings to you today from Botswana. I wanted to go over today a devotional that I received about a month ago. Some children were going by on a Sunday and they were apparently giving out devotionals uh, from their church. They were just passing them out. This is the one they gave to me. Hope you can see that well. Rhapsodies of Realities. Maybe it doesn't show up so well, I don't know how it looks. But apparently this is a pretty popular monthly devotional, you know, as it has every day for a month. But this one was actually from August of 2012. So it was exactly 10 years uh, prior to when they were giving it. And uh, I mean, I, I looked it up. I don't know why they have an old one. It doesn't surprise me that they would have some used ones around here. Uh, however, uh, Rhapsody of Realities has been around since uh, the year 2000. And so that makes it about 22 years old. The, the two that are involved in this, with this one here, Chris and Anita Oyakolomi. I believe that's how you pronounce it, Oyakolomi. Uh, Chris and Anita are no longer together. Uh, we were doing a little research and saw that they did divorce, and she did remarry. I don't think he remarried. We saw no information on that. And also, though, we were looking to see if he was doing the same type of of devotional. Because what happened is I wanted to do a little examination of it. Today we have, what we face around here in great, great numbers is this prosperity gospel. It is health and wealth. It is self-esteem. Uh, name it, claim it. However you want to say it, it's all about prosperity and about living well in the present world. And so I wanted to compare, I wanted to see what these teachings were and which I suspected to be very much prosperity gospel. Uh, these are from Nigeria, I believe. And even as you can see, there's a little scripture on the front of this. They have one scripture, it says, but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. That's from Proverbs 4.18. As you can see, it says nothing about the word. It says nothing about God or Jesus or anything. It talks about the path of the just, which again, that's a promotion of self, which is what we see so much today. So I just wanted to go over, I did an extensive review on this. I want you to know that I have it in a blog, which is going to be a little bit longer. Try to keep the, the videos on the short side. Uh, the blog is Devotional Dissection, and that there should be a link to that in the description. Uh, when you're seeing this, I pray that you would uh, bear with me I'm kind of winging this a little bit, but I've been over this so many times, and it's it's kind of a it's kind of a discouraging thing. However, I wanted to tell you I'm not really attacking rhapsody of realities. I thought that this might be a good example of the kind of teachings we're facing today as Christians, and we need to watch out for them. So I just wanted to point some things out, things you can watch out for. But I wanted to start by reading scripture from Second Timothy chapter three. Start in verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. They are traitors, heady, high-minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Amen. They have a form of godliness, but they are denying the power thereof from such turn away. And this is exactly uh, what we are ordered to do. And many of these descriptions, of course, fit what I am reading in this book. But to give you a little lowdown on the book, just some, just some things for your information. I really don't want you to think that I'm twisting truth. I try to be, I try to be honest. I try to be fair, but this is a Christian devotional. It's supposed to be for the encouragement of believers, for building up their faith. Okay, this is a this was for the month of August, as I have said. So it was a 31-day month, and each day has two, two pages assigned to it. The total pages in this book uh, are, are 96. That's front and back. I count front and back pages, and because everything has something on it anyway. Uh, I have considered that 84 of them 
would be usable to print something about Christianity, about our relationship with Christ, something. Um, other words, there are some that, let's see, there's a, a couple of feedback forms. There are some advertisements for other Christian events going on. They could say something also. Uh, things like that. But I tried to be fair, so I consider that 84 of the 96 pages would be usable. There are 78 printed scriptures within. That's not listing, just listing uh, a reference. That is, they have them printed out with their words, 78 of those. We see also that when we went to the first, uh, the, the updated uh, Rhapsody of Realities, we went to that updated form. Uh, they said that they had been in, they were being in 242 countries, had been distributed in 242 countries. But looking on Google, I thought, boy, that seems a little high. Google says there are only 195 countries in the world right now. And I tend to think that 242 uh, may have been accumulated uh, a little generously, but it could have been an honest mistake. So I don't want to uh, say anything bad about that. Uh, when I began to look at this, I was focused, I did at first to focus on words. What certain words? Because one thing that I have learned over time is that when we're looking at the prosperity gospel, what it is today, people don't want to talk about sin or the separation from God. That is very unpopular. And that is exactly what the leaders are staying away from. So just in terms of words, I had several words. I had actually five words, which would be the cross, sin, grace, mercy, and repentance. And I thought these would be good words to look at to see how often they appeared uh, within the devotional. And so as I looked at this, I found some interesting things. Number one, the cross or crucified, be crucified, was not found anywhere. You could not find the cross in this devotional, but that is our salvation. That's the redemption of man from sin. The cross was not there. Mercy, mercy was nowhere to be found. Mercy is found 55 times in the New Testament and 112 times in the book of Psalms alone, but they didn't have mercy even once. Repentance or repent was listed one time I found it on August 7th. Uh, the scripture was Matthew 18, verses 1 to 4. It was in the first verse. And, of course, the word repent was not looked at at all in the devotional uh, teaching of the day. It was, it was just a part of the scripture that they had listed at first. So I want to look to this, look to some of these a little bit more closely. Let's look at sin. Okay, sin was listed four times in three verses, in three uh, three days, August 2nd, the 6th, and 9th. Again, I encourage you to go to the blog. It's going to take a little bit longer. It's a little bit more detailed. On August 2nd, in his speaking about Jesus, Chris said that he, he forgave, blessed, healed, raised the dead, embraced sinners, and changed lives. Of course, that's a little redundant. Obviously, all those things are changing lives. But he said he embraced sinners. And I find this objectionable because Jesus did not really embrace sinners. He reached out to them. He told them to repent. Jesus Christ came to save sinners. That's what he did. So yes, he reached out to them, but he did not embrace them. That kind of implies a form of acceptance, uh, which I find to be unscriptural. And then we look at the sixth. This was actually two listings in one day. And this is from Anita. Good news to the sinner is that God is not mad at him because of his sins. That's what she said. Good news to the sinner, God is not mad at him because of his sins. I would challenge her to look at John 3.36 or Psalm 7.11. God is very angry with sin and with sinners. He does love them, but if he is righteous and holy, then he needs to hold sin uh, he needs to hold them accountable for sin until they repent, until they turn to him. And so this, again, was not uh, what I'm looking for here when I'm talking about sin is our own separation from God because of sin. That is the very nature. That's the core of how 
we become saved when we recognize this. And again, I'm not seeing it here either. And so then we will go to the to August 9th. This one I was real I thought was really bad. Uh, Anita starts out with James 121, the first scripture that opens. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But then she comments on it. Save your souls in the context of the theme verse above doesn't refer to salvation from sin, but to the preservation of the salvation of the human soul. So apparently, at least by this, it seems Anita is telling anyone reading this that they're already saved and they just need to, to latch on to something to preserve their salvation. Nothing is mentioned about separating from sin and repenting. Very, very disturbing. Again, as I had already told you about repentance, but now we'll look at grace for a little bit. Grace was listed actually five times. You say, wow, that's pretty good. Well, it sounds pretty good, but again, we're looking for the grace that we need to be saved. We're not saved by our good works. Remember, if I, uh, for it is by grace we have been saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's from Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. And this type of grace we do not find in, in this book. It's not here, even though it's listed five times. Although I will go over it for you, uh, just so I'm not trying to, I don't look dishonest. Uh, the first grace was on August 1st. It was listed in the, the printed prayer that you're, you're supposed to repeat at the end. As he's praying to God, or as you're saying, I thank you for the grace you've granted me to be an effective soul winner. So he hasn't granted grace so that he could be saved from his sins. It's so that he could be an effective soul winner. In other words, here it is. It's up, up, up. Everything's up. Nothing is at all uh, humble or listing our true condition uh, with the Lord. And then on August 5th, it's kind of similar. Again, now this is part of a confession, but it would be at the end and where the prayer was. It says, I thank you for your glory and grace that you've bestowed on me to reign in life today and forever. I'm going to reign. I'm going to rule. Boy, doesn't that sound humble? Isn't that the kind of grace uh, that God is giving to us? So again, like I said, uh, these last three, the other three that were there, one is in this. This is something else. This is called Love World News. This is also printed uh, by these guys. There's a little copy. It's 12 pages long in here. And this says that we've been graced with the, the unique opportunity to serve the Lord in a special way in our ministry. So that doesn't really talk about any kind of grace. That's just kind of an expression. We've been graced to serve the Lord in this way. And then the last two in each one, uh, the grace was actually part of a description of Jesus from Scripture. So it wasn't even it wasn't talking about us and our need for the grace of God. It is something that um, is just kind of laid aside. So you can see this here. You can see what it is again: the cross, sin, grace, mercy, repentance. In eighty-four usable pages of the book, you can see how little they're mentioned. And I have to tell you, I have to tell you, there's something else that's missing too. Gratitude, praise to God. And I found this especially, it, it seemed like every time I opened this book, I saw something else. I wasn't even looking. I was kind of reviewing, just trying to let the information sink in. But here they have this prayer of salvation in the back. But of course, it is almost like, just like an obligatory prayer of salvation. They do nothing in leading up to this. They're not trying to lead sinners to, to the Lord. They just kind of throw it out there, you know. Hey, do you want to be saved? You know, prayer of salvation. This is very interesting, though. As it begins, it says, We trust you have been blessed by this devotional. We invite you to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life by praying thus. This I have seen from him and from her several times. Make Jesus the Lord of your life. That's what they talk about first. They're not talking about being separate from God. The first step would be salvation, would be repentance, would be the remission of sins through Jesus Christ. But they just kind of hop right over that. And so what I want you to know is of those words, remember the words I said, 
the cross, sin, repentance, grace, and mercy, these words appear nowhere in the prayer of salvation in the back of the book. None of them appear even once. But there was something more startling to me when I saw it this last time. There's no gratitude. I want you to hear what is being said. There are two scriptures listed here, but I will just read it. It's short. Of course it's short. Isn't it easy? Sure. Oh, Lord God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 2.21. I don't know why they couldn't have listed 2.38. That would have been a whole lot better. I ask Jesus to come into my heart to be the Lord of my life. That's what they asked first. There's no repentance. I ask Jesus to come into my heart to be the Lord. Where's the sin? Where's the separation? That says, I receive eternal life into my spirit, and according to Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I declare that I am saved. I am born again. I am a child of God. I now have Christ dwelling in me, and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I now walk in the consciousness of my new life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Did you miss something there, Brother Chris, Sister Anita? Did you miss gratitude for the Son of God that died for your sins? Did you praise him because he redeemed your soul from hell and the wrath of God won't have to abide on you anymore? No, I declare this is who I am. And this is exactly the type of thing that we are seeing today and exactly the reason why you should steer away from, from these things. But I had a few examples that I wanted to look at. Time may be running short here, so I'll try to, I will, I'll try to go through this uh, very quickly. On August the 5th, Chris says something like this. God wants you to enjoy the life he has given you because that's the reason Jesus came in the first place. You have to enjoy every day of your journey in life. Wow, I didn't know that. I thought we were supposed to humble ourselves, take up our cross daily. I didn't know we had to enjoy life. I didn't know that was the reason Jesus came. I thought he came to save sinners of whom I am chief. The Bible doesn't exactly say that, does it? But that is the prosperity gospel. Oh, he came to, to give you a great life just to enjoy life. But you know something? That is the, the, the goal of every sinner separated from God. We all try to enjoy life. And there are plenty who have gone to their graves enjoying life to the hilt. And they've never known salvation. Enjoying life, huh? Let's enjoy it and have peace in the Lord rather than enjoy it in the flesh, okay? He makes no distinction in those things. On August 24th, there was, an, there was another big one. Actually, there's a lot, of, a lot of them in here, but I, can't, I don't have time to go over all of them. But this one got me. This was, from, this was from Anita. And she says that in the Old Testament, they tried to obey God and failed. But in the New Testament, we are not told to obey, but are called obedient children in 1 Peter 1, 14. So the New Testament doesn't tell us to obey God in any area. Hmm? I think she might have missed just a few chapters and verses along the way. I'm not even going to mention there's a, there's a few listed in the description and more. Uh, obviously, you could look them up. I mean, this is a totally ludicrous thing to say. But she's taking one verse and then declares that we don't have to obey or try to obey God anymore. And that's just not at all the scripture. We also see some different little things. At one point, she said, Abraham spoke to the barren womb. She was talking about, you know, kind of that name it, claim it, proclaim, confession. He spoke to the barren womb. The Bible doesn't say he spoke to the barren womb. Okay, he really doesn't. In... Number 23, August 23rd, Chris makes a, an outstanding goof as he is reading from Ezekiel 47, or he has that listed, I should say. But he claims that Ezekiel 47, God is giving instruction to the priest for how to heal the people by these trees that are on the river of life on either side. And that is nowhere to be found in Scripture. Nowhere. That is a vision God gave to Ezekiel that started in chapter 40. And it seems to be a vision that, that coincides with the vision of the New Jerusalem when we get to Revelation 21. 
So he's being kind of careless with God's word. We also see something in on August 27th that I found profound. Boy, that kind of, that was difficult to say. But Anita here was saying, what you need to, to do is to wake up to the realization that you are blessed in all things. You're like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. Your leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever you do shall prosper. She reads that, that is from Psalm 1, verse 3. What she doesn't tell you is that this is a conditional promise. It says, Blessed is he that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he does meditate both day and night. And then we have this promise. So it is a conditional promise, but she has it painted like it isn't. It's just out there. We're just going to prosper in everything we do. Friends, I hope you can see what I've been trying to say to you. <laughs> yes, this rhapsody of realities is not going to lead you in a good path. But I'm telling you, it is not alone. This is the way the churches have been going. This is the way they have been falling in this last day. It is a good example of bad teaching that is just proliferating through the churches today. So I urge you, as the Bereans did in Acts 17, 11, to double check everything with the word of God and pray. You know something? God, the Holy Spirit, is well able to teach you his word on his own. So trust in the Lord and don't put your trust in men. Put them to the test by the word of God. May God bless you.